Today, Junior Tickies, I'm Mrs. Primaco. We're going to look now at Chapter 7 on Inventories. Now, before you start with any of these activities, make sure that you go through your theory booklet. Understand the different concepts. Understand the difference between a periodic and a perpetual inventory system. The focus in Grade 10 was on a perpetual, or another word, is continuous inventory system where all movement of trading stock was recorded in the trading stock account. In grade 11, we are now going to add to that. We're going to look at the periodic inventory system. Now, in activity 1, we're going to go through everything that you've basically done in grade 10. The focus is going to be on a perpetual or continuous inventory system. Now, if we look at this activity, good read shop. The business sells books and uses a markup of 80% on cost. The business makes use of the perpetual inventory system. Again, another word for that is continuous inventory system. Question 1.1, list the advantages and disadvantages of a perpetual inventory system. 1.2, show the effect it will have on the accounting equation. Note, do not show the net effect and the business has a favorable bank balance. And that is very important to make sure that you get that part right. 1.3, Complete the following ledger accounts in the general ledger. So we only need to complete the trading stock account and the trading account. 1.4. Calculate the markup percentage achieved. 1.5. Calculate how long Goodreads shop can expect their stock to last. And 1.6. Which internal control measures can be in place? To ensure the safeguarding of stock. So these are commonly asked questions when we look at inventory systems. In my information, they provided me A, the trading stock on hand on the 1st of January 2022, and B, the transactions for the month of January. Question 1.1, list the advantages and disadvantages. So if we're first looking now at the advantages of this type of system, trading stock records are up to date. Remember that all movement of trading stock is recorded in your trading stock account. There's better control over your trading stock. A physical stock count can be compared to the value in your trading stock account Again, because all movement of trading stock is recorded in my trading stock account. So if I do a physical stock count and I look at the value of that physical stock count and I compare that to the trading stock account, I can determine if there's a deficit or a surplus. A physical stock count will show if there's any stock losses. As mentioned a little bit earlier, I can determine by comparing if there's deficit, which means that there's stock missing, or there could be a potential that there's a surplus. If we're looking at the disadvantages, you need a computerized system, and this can be very expensive for businesses. Employees will need to be trained in how to use that system. The system, of course, will also be used depending on what is it that I'm actually selling. Because it won't be suited for all businesses. Example, if I'm selling beads, I cannot put a barcode on a bead. Question 1.2. Show the effect on the accounting equation. Assets equals owner's equity plus liabilities. Show an increase with a plus before the amount, a decrease with a minus before the amount, and no effect with a zero. Make sure that you look at the instructions specifically what is expected of you. 
Now, if we're completing the accounting equation, you can use this as a checklist just to make sure if I debit, if I credit, what effect will that have on the accounting equation? So the word that we use is dead click. D for debit, E for expenses, A for assets, D for drawings. L for liabilities, I for income, C for capital. So every time an expense, asset or drawings is debited, it will be plus on the debit side, which means it will be minus on the credit side. If we're looking at liabilities, income, and capital, every time it is credited, it will be plus on the credit side, which means if that is debited, it will then be minus. Now, important to take note of the following. We're not using an expanded accounting equation. So in other words, you need to identify all income, expenses, how would that affect the owner's equity? Transaction number one, purchase trading stock and paid 32,000 by EFD. So first, if a payment is made cash by EFD electronically, this will be recorded in your CPJ. From the CPJ, you should know that your bank will always be credited. If bank is credited, it means we apply the double entry principle, trading stock will be debited. Sorry, if bank is credited, it means that trading stock will be debited. So again, from the CPJ, bank is always credited, then account debited trading stock. Bank is classified as an asset and trading stock as an asset, which means that your assets will be plus minus 32,000. Owner's equity zero, liabilities zero. Remember that the instruction said you need to indicate it. Transaction number two, paid 5,600 cash for the delivery of goods purchase. So if we need to pay for transport for goods that we purchase, which is delivered to us. This must be added to the trading stock account. And if a payment is made cash, it's shown in your CPJ. From the CPJ, bank is always credited. The rest is debited, which means my trading stock is going to be debited. Both is classified as an asset. So again, it will be plus minus 5,600 zero owner's equity and liabilities. Transaction number three, total cash sales, 139,158. Customers were granted 10% trade discount on all cash purchases. This means that there's two entries to this. First, we need to show the selling price and because we sold this cash, it means it will be recorded in your cash receipts journal. From the cash receipts journal, bank is always debited, count credited, sales. The total amount that the customers paid was 139,158. Bank is a favorable bank balance, so it's an asset, will be debited plus, and income, because it's credited plus, will have a positive effect on my owner's equity. So make sure it's the symbol, plus or minus, with the amount. Now you need to be very careful. When we're calculating the cost, we need to first add the trade discount. And this is why we're going to say 139,158 times 100 divided by 90. I want to know what was the sales amount before the trade discount. Then we can calculate using the markup percentage, which was 80%. 
So times 100 divided by 180. Be very careful with this. When we're calculating the cost and this trade discount, we first need to add the trade discount. So what was the selling price before the trade discount? And then we work out the cost by using the markup percentage. Now, if we're looking at cost of sales, it's an expense which will be debited, account credited, trading stock, our expense will plus, which means it will have a negative effect on your owner's equity and my assets minus because we sold the trading stock. Transaction number four, stock purchase on credit. 159,300 and paid 17,400 for import duties. So in this type of system, inventory system, any additional cost must be added to the trading stock account. This means that we need to take the purchase of the goods, which is 159,300 plus the 17,400 for import duties. Because this is on credit, it will go into our creditors journal. From the creditors journal, creditors control is always going to be credited, which means trading stock is going to be debited. Trading stock is an asset, creditors control, liability. So assets plus and liabilities plus 176,700. Number five, credit sales to customers, 183,600. Credit sales means it goes into the debtor's journal. Money owed to the business, those people, those customers, will be shown as debtors. So we need to open up debtor's control. Why did the business receive money or is money owed to the business? Because of sales. Sales will be credited. Debtors control is classified as an asset, so it's plus. And income, sales is regarded as an income plus, which will have a positive effect on the owner's equity. Nothing happened with your liabilities. To work out the cost, we need to take the selling price times 100 divided by 180. Cost of sales is debited, account credited, trading stock. Cost of sales is regarded as an expense which will increase but it will have a negative effect on the owner's equity and my assets is going to decrease because we sold those goods. Number six, the owner donated books to the local school with a selling price value of 19800 Now, when we're donating goods, we're not going to donate it at the selling price. It will always be at cost, which means we first need to work out the cost by taking the selling price times 100 divided by 180. The two accounts involved is donations and trading stock. So this will be recorded in your general journal. Account debited, donations, account credited, trading stock. Use trading stock as a base to work from. If we donate it, you should know that trading stock will be credited because my assets is going to decrease. So if trading stock is credited, it means that donations will be debited. Because my expense increase, it will have a negative effect on the owner's equity assets minus 11,000. Number seven, Goodreads shop returned stock purchase to suppliers 22,700. This means that we decided that we want to return some of the stock which we purchased on credit. And that will always be shown in the creditor's allowance journal. We owe our suppliers less money, which means creditor's control is always debited from the creditor's allowance journal. Account credited, trading stock. Trading stock is an asset, which means it will be minus 
and liabilities minus because we owe them less money. Number eight, the cost price of credit notes issued 8,900. Be careful here. Number one, credit notes issued means that goods that were sold on credit to debtors were returned by those customers, by those debtors, and we've credited their account. It says there, credit notes issued. But now, second thing to be careful of, they provided you with the cost which means you first need to work out the selling price value. And to work out the selling price, you need to say times 180 divided by 100. When goods are returned by credit customers, it will always be shown in the debtor's allowance journal, account debited, debtor's allowances, account credited, debtor's control. Because both debtors owe us less money, we need to credit their account. Debtor's allowances is regarded as an expense. If our expense increase, it will have a negative effect on the owner's equity and debtor's control asset minus. But now we're not done. We still need to show the cost. To show the cost now, Trading stock is going to be debited. We got the trading stock back. It means that our assets will increase. Cost of sales will be credited. Our expense will decrease. It means plus 8,900. Because our expense decrease, it will have a positive effect on the owner's equity. That's why we've got plus 8,900. Number nine, merchandise purchased on credit for 4750 was incorrectly recorded as stationary. Another word for merchandise is trading stock. So what is happening here? We've purchased trading stock, but instead of showing it as trading stock, we indicate it as stationary. It means a correction needs to be made, and that happens in your general journal. The account that should be debited is trading stock, account credited, stationary. Because trading stock is an asset which is debited, our assets will be plus, our expense is going to be credited, which means minus. And if our expense decrease, it has a positive effect on the owner's equity. So it's plus, plus 4,750. Number 10, the owner withdrew 2,100 inventory at cost price. Inventory is trading stock. So the owner took for personal use. When this happens, it's indicated in your general journal. Account debited, drawings, Account credited, trading stock. Now, drawings is debited plus, which means it will have a negative effect on the owner's equity and my assets is going to decrease. Number 11. According to the physical stock take, the business had a deficit of 1,800. So instead of providing you with the physical stock take, the value of that, how much stock we've got left over, and now you needed to calculate if there's a deficit or a surplus, they've provided you with the surplus, sorry, with the deficit figure. And they said there was stock missing. That's what a deficit means of 1,800. This means in my general journal, this is where the adjustment would have taken place. Account debited, trading stock deficit, it's an expense which is debited. Account credited, trading stock. Because our expense increases, it means it will have a negative effect on the owner's equity. Trading stock is an asset 
minus 1,800. A reminder that these transactions is actually work that you've done in grade 10. So just this is just to revise it. 1.3, complete the following ledger accounts in the general ledger. So we have to complete the trading stock account by looking at all the transactions that we've now completed in the previous question in question 1.2. So if we're looking at the trading stock, it's an asset, which means plus on the debit, minus on the credit. You should know that your opening balance will always appear on the debit side. There's the plus, so it appears on the debit side. They say trading stock on hand on the 1st of January 2022 was 28518 now, if we're looking at when will our trading stock increase, our trading stock will increase when we buy trading stock. If we bought trading stock cash, it will be from the CPJ, our details is bank. So now we need to go and have a look on question 1.2. Every single time when you see the journal CPJ, it means we need to now add that to find out what was the total purchases of trading stock from the cash payment journal. So if we add those two together, it is 37,600. Our trading stock will increase when we buy on credit. So from the creditors journal, our details is creditors control. Day four, from the creditors journal, we purchase trading stock 176,700. Our trading stock will also increase when customers return trading stock to us. And that will always be from the debtors allowance journal. From the debtors allowance journal, your details is cost of sales. Make sure that you get that right. So the total cost was 8,900. Remember to use the cost and not the selling price. That is a common mistake. Now, if we look at when else did our trading stock increase? So we need to look at transaction number nine. We bought trading stock, which was incorrectly recorded as stationary. So stationary was credited so that trading stock can be debited. And the total, 4,750. You cannot write trading stock in trading stock as your details. The contra account is stationary because stationary would have been credited. There were no other transactions where trading stock needed to be debited. So looking at when will our trading stock decrease? First of all is when we are selling our trading stock. Remember that this type of inventory system, it means that cost of sales is calculated every time we're selling goods. This means if we sold goods cash, it will be from the cash receipts journal and the contra account is cost of sales. So day three, the total cost was 85,900. When else will it decrease if we sold on credit, which means from the debtors journal, my details, cost of sales, and the amount was 102,000. When else will this decrease is when we decide to return goods to our suppliers and that will be from the creditors allowance journal. So these are the basics that you can study and make sure that you get it 100% correct. So from the creditors allowance journals, we've returned items to our suppliers, 22,700. Now we need to look at where else did our trading stock decrease? Number six, the owner donated which means that 
trading stock was credited, donations will be debited with 11,000. Then we had the owner took stock for personal use on day 10 or number 10. So drawings would have been debited, account credited, trading stock, 2,100. And then we had on number 11, the trading stock deficit, it will always appear on the credit side, 1,800. Now we've taken all the transactions, which means the last step is we need to calculate our balance of our trading stock, take the debit side, it must be equal to the credit side, and the difference is my balance brought down. The next ledger account that we needed to complete was the trading account. Now in this perpetual or continuous inventory system, your trading account is a final account. I will always have on the credit side sales. But please remember that the first closing transfer, debtors allowances is closed off to sales. Then sales is closed off to the trading account. So we need to look now everywhere where we actually see cash receipts journal, debtors journal and debtors allowance journal. We need to look for our sales. So transaction number three or the third one, we've got our cash sales plus number five, our credit sales minus number eight, the debtors allowances and that equals my total sales. Now I need to look at the same ones to find out the cost of sales. Everywhere where you see the word cost of sales. So you can refer to question 1.2 or you can look at question 1.3, cost of sales, cost of sales, cost of sales. So my cost of sales will always appear on the debit side in my trading account. Cash plus credit minus returns by customers equals my cost of sales. Once we've got our cost of sales, we can calculate our gross profit, which is closed off to the profit and loss account. Take the credit side minus the debit side. 1.4. Calculate the markup percentage achieved and then comment on the markup percentage achieved. Should the owner be satisfied, provide possible reasons for the, any deviations. So when we want to answer this now, we can look at our trading account. Because in my trading account, we've got the gross profit, which we calculated by taking the sales minus the cost of sales. And to calculate your markup percentage, you need to take the sales minus cost of sales, divided by cost of sales times 100. This means that my markup percentage that we've actually achieved was 71,4%. Now commenting on that, when we're looking at the gross profit on cost of sales, we always look at have we achieved our aimed markup or not. Now our markup percentage was 80%. So should the owner be satisfied? No because we have not achieved our aimed markup of 80%. We've only achieved 71,4%. So if we look at possible reasons for this, too much trade discount given to customers, poorly controlled sales at lower prices than attended, mistakes in marking prices on stock, mistakes on source documents or in the books. Do not say poor control over stock and stock was missing or stolen or something like that. Remember that in this type of inventory system, we can determine if there is a deficit or a surplus. All movement of trading stock is recorded in the trading stock account. The cost of sales is calculated every single time when an item is sold. 
It's calculated every single time when a customer returned items to us. Question 1.5. Calculate how long Goodreads shop can expect their stock to last. So when you see this type of question, you should immediately know the financial indicator applicable here is the stock holding period. How long do we keep our stock? How long will the stock last, last us? So when we want to calculate this, it's always your average stock divided by the cost of sales times 365. If they ask you specifically to only calculate using your closing stock figure, then you only use the closing stock and not the average. In this case, they didn't say specifically the closing stock, so then we're going to use the average. It means that we can look at the trading stock account. In our trading stock account, we've got the opening balance and we've got the closing balance. So this means the opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. To get the cost of sales, we need to use the trading account. We've calculated our cost of sales, 179000 You can also refer to question 1.4. The cost of sales, 179000 This means our average stock, 29805 divided by the cost of sales, 179000 times 365 equals 60,8 days. Now, they could have asked you to calculate the stock turnover rate. The stock turnover rate is how quickly do we turn over our stock into cash. Then it's the opposite. Then you need to take your cost of sales divided by your average stock and your answer should always be in times. Just remember that. Question 1.6. Which internal control measures can be, can be in place to ensure the safeguarding of stock? So this is internal control incorporated. One, count the stock regularly or randomly and check against the stock records. This system enables you to detect if there's any stock which is missing because I've got something to compare it to. Order smaller quantities but more frequently. Don't have too much stock lying around. Improve physical security like control at entrances, security cameras. Ensure that the stock against theft fire and damages resulting from natural, natural disasters. So make sure that there's insurance. Don't think, oh, what's the need? It's just an added expense to take out insurance. Anything can happen. And if you've got thousands of rands tied up in that trading stock and anything happens with that trading stock and you don't have insurance, you lose all of that. Divisions of duties, which means... And elaborate here. Receiving of stock, payments and stock keeping should be done by separate individuals to minimize the risk of fraudulent activities. You shouldn't have the same person doing all of that. Check if the records of the stock received match with payments for the stock. It's so important that when stock is delivered, don't just sign and put it away without even checking. Is it the correct stock which was actually ordered? Is it the correct number of items which was ordered? Because what happens now if you just signed and now you've discovered when you open the box, but there's items missing, but you signed that you've received all of that. You never checked. So then you are going to be at fault. If it happens that your supplier didn't, didn't provide you with enough or the correct number of items, then you can immediately pick it up and say to your supplier, but listen, 
I've ordered 10 items, but there's only 8 items that was delivered. So then they need to send you an additional 2 items. It's so important that these control measures are put in place and that everybody knows that these are the procedures that will be followed. Thank you very much. In our next activity, in activity 2, we're going to look at similar type of questions, but now the focus is going to be on the periodic inventory system. I want to leave you with a quote. A little progress each day adds up to big results. Have a wonderful day.